Welcome everyone to episode 22 of Rhythm Encounter, RPG Fans Music Podcast. I'm Stephen Meyer, Taylor's on the boards. I am your perennial host, and joining me today is a new face to RPG fan music. Well, you're not new anymore, you're, you're an old Relatively face. new. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still mostly new. I'm Mike Solosi, Monsoon on the boards, and I am super excited about our guest today. Oh man, <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> yes, today we have the great pleasure of speaking to Chris Keehan and Dan Byrne McCullough of Hyperduck Soundworks. Dan and Chris, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for having thank us you. on. We've been big fans of your work. I know when I hired Mr. Solosi here, I believe we actually, you, you did a review of the Penny Arcade 4 soundtrack, didn't you, Mike? I did. That was my, uh, that was I your guess entrance, my, Sam. Yeah, it, it, was my, it was my resume piece and it was also my first review that got published on RPG Fan. Yeah, I so... I'm a big fan. And uh, I, I first became uh, familiar with y'all's work through Dust. I actually heard the soundtrack before I knew anything about the game, and it convinced me to go buy the game just so I could hear <laughs> it. It's just one of those cases where I'm, I'm easily bought by music I enjoy, especially when it comes to games. So, you know, kudos on that. <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, Mike, you're going to start off with the uh, questions here, so go right ahead. Sure. All right, now, first, uh, we'd love our listeners to hear a little bit of background about you guys. Uh, so go ahead and tell us how the two of you met and what circumstances led to you collaborating. And also, I guess, your uh, musical background a little bit. So go ahead, inform us. Go for it, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, me and Chris have known each other for a long time. We've been friends since we were teenagers. And um, then, so we'd always kind of mucked around playing, playing music and bands and stuff like that, you know, really, really awful bands. Then eventually we started to actually educate ourselves and go to college and we went through all the rigmarole of doing some music diplomas and we even went on to move on to university across the water in Newcastle upon Tyne. We did a jazz degree and a lot of performance, centered around performance. Chris was a drummer and a piano player and I was a guitarist so we spent a lot of time playing together and living together and playing games together. <laughs> So I guess uh, that was our background before we did any sort of video game music. And then uh, in first year of university was when we did a favor for a friend called uh, Dan Ramar, and we ended up writing music for a game, a freeware game called Easy, and that's just kind of where um, we started everything, I guess. After that, people said they really liked it, and we thought it was kind of interesting that people really like uh, video game music that's not from their childhood, so... We kind of just kept going with it, and that's just kept. I don't know. We we were going to be jazz musicians, you know, working the, working the circuit, but uh, we decided to be uh, video game composers. Yeah, it's pretty I, true though. <laughs> I, I, I took piano lessons for a couple of years in high school before I went to college, and my teacher was a jazz pianist, and he was like, you know, a sixty-year veteran of playing jazz shows. So when he would play, I'd be like, uh, eh, C chord, uh, uh, and he'd be <laughs> like, here, let me invert that for you four hundred times upside down with one hand. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. jazz is not easy yeah, to play. Yeah, jazz piano is no joke. I was a pianist for many years, and I didn't even approach that level of ability. I, yeah. <laughs> I think you pretty much have to have no social life to be an amazing <laughs> jazz musician. But uh, Well, yeah. I'm glad we got you guys. <laughs> yeah, our lives are enriched for the better for the uh, choice that you made to compose game soundtracks, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if only we were more skilled, you know. <laughs> We'd probably be a lot poorer, actually, as well, you know, but that's a different story as well. <laughs> so, can we talk a little bit about your creative process? Like, you know, you've worked with uh, Zavoid Games a lot. When you make a game yeah. soundtrack, do you do the des do you work with the designers? Like, do you get storyboards and artwork for the, the mood of the music that should go with it? Or, mm -hmm. you know, how, how does your process work? Like, do you guys work separately, or do you work really closely, or does it sort of vary? Well, generally, we'll, um, we've kind of got a... A routine now that we know what to ask when we go into a new project but because we've worked with um, Robert and Bill on Penny Arcade beforehand we've developed a, a process of them that we actually developed through working with Dean which was really you know uh, talking about an area in a game talking about music that they like uh, building up a small list of like style references and influences from other games or albums or whatever to get an idea of what the like musical tone and mood would be like for that area and then we just kind of use that and repeat that process for um every part every aspect of the game you know whether it's sound or a cutscene or an actual you know a battle 
theme or whatever it is, you know, and uh, it seems to work pretty well for us. So we just kind of, you know, we do that. We have kind of a sketchboard of, you know, YouTube links that just uh, go to <laughs> various computer game, you know, tracks. And uh, that just sort of, it sets up, you know, the, the idea in our head, but we never really, we never really follow the style that is influencing the whole area of the game for that part. You know, it's kind of just like, it's like a like a Kickstarter, you know, it just gets the ball rolling kind of thing. And then we, we go off on a happy tangent and come up with something absolutely, totally different than what they asked for. And they <laughs> seem to like it anyway, so it's okay. It's oh, yeah. Lucky, it's, like. Robert Boyd loves talking you guys up on Twitter. He's, he, he's, oh, bit, man. he's maybe even a bigger fan of you than I am. He, like, we were going to hire PR, but uh, he does, <laughs> you know, he does plenty of it for us, so there's no need. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so what do you have a favorite thing or a notable thing that strikes you about working with Robert and Bill from Z-Boyd? They're they're honest and they know what they want. And they know they're kind of like Dean's like uh, they know what they want, but they also know to just let us do our thing, which is really nice. Don't really always get that like perfect balance of, you know, like clear referencing and people sort of just having, you know, enough confidence to leave it in our hands and let us sort of put our mark on it. So, it's good good that way you know and they're just really nice guys like so yeah we're we're really lucky they're they're always really excited to get a new track from us and uh thankfully they actually like our music in general <laughs> so <laughs> uh but i mean it's sometimes it's hard robert you want to see what the skype conversation looks like sometimes we'll 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 have been busting ourselves all week putting together a track and then we'll stick it up and explain <laughs> it and then robert will go yeah, this works. <laughs> and that's it. That's, and that's, that's it. it. <laughs> and we go, oh my God. Oh my God. Maybe he didn't like it that much. And then like a few days later, he'll be like, oh yeah, this is one of my favorite tracks. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, man, or I feel like, you know, you're like, give him a big long winded explanation. You're like, oh my God, I really like hope he likes this track. It's like the final boss track. And then he'll be like, sounds good. <laughs> you're like, I thought this it. was going to be a harder sell, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but we've learned that means like, you know, he's like, somersaulting in his chair applauding you know air horns everything <laughs> he's, he's just celebrating that tune to highest of his ability i guess but uh, so the sound good means oh my god that is amazing i've never heard something so good in robert language yeah i i don't want to put words in his mouth necessarily but i mean <laughs> those uh z-boy does everything in their games from coding to uh, basic design to art assets everything is all of is all those two guys except for the audio so yeah. um that they have chosen to work with you a second time and are such enthusiastic fans of yours really i think i i think that your work blows them away because it's something completely out of their wheelhouses and you do such a stellar job of doing it so uh let's let, let's talk about um some of these that both your most recent games and your and this upcoming Cosmic Star Heroine from Z-Void. Uh, Cosmic Star Heroine is very s distinctly a science fiction game. It's inspired by Fantasy Star, among other things, and uh, and the soundtrack and the soundtrack. Uh, see, at least the tracks that you've released so far really do match the setting and tone. And I'm I'm super excited to play the game if it wasn't already obvious. And <laughs> it's a re it's really different from Dust, which was a fantasy setting with sort of more atmospheric orchestral music. And Penny Arcade Four. Uh, really went all over the map with um, some orchestral stuff, some more straightforward rock stuff, because that game is, you know, sort of a send-up or like a pastiche of traditional Japanese RPG settings. Like, oh, here's the desert part, here's the jungle, here's the future tower, here's the more, here's you know, the antiquated tower. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's three very different RPGs with different settings and tones. So, like... When you approached each of those games, how was your process different for each one? I mean, for Dust, I don't know if you've heard them, but I think we've got some of the kind of classic tracks on the soundtrack because the soundtrack for Dust started out completely different from what it ended up as. I mean, it was this kind of old school Japanese 90s out there, brash music with East, East crazy four. Yeah, yeah. like like, And it started out like that. We pretty much finished the soundtrack and then at the last minute it, well not the last minute but after we thought we'd finished it it was like from I think from some producers at Microsoft or Dean had suggested he goes I think we need to make this more orchestral and then I was like okay so <laughs> we had to redo the whole thing 
which was interesting, but absolutely worth it, I think, in the end. So, th but that was that was a good call, whoever did that, because I think the music definitely suited the style much better in the end because of the, the art style of the game. And it, it gave it a wider appeal, for sure, I would imagine. Then as for Penny Arcade game, that was a really good area for us, I think, probably because I'm I'm like 28 years old, so is Chris. We both grew up in the that kind of age of the 16-bit era RPGs and all those games, and, and we, it's pretty much in our veins as to what those games sound like. And then we were really lucky because we just got to kind of fuse those old school sounds with just our own stuff, which is just whatever we we feel like doing sometimes you know it really depends but it was always in service of that type of game that we both pretty much grew up playing quite a lot of so and i think that's probably why they hired us because they know that's what we were, we were good at we had a kind of an instinctive feel for that type of game then for cosmic star i don't know i'll let chris talk about that because that's all just synth land it is the 1980s yeah. the year was 1980 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Cosmic Star was, it was just like Robert was showing it to us, I think, or talking about it whenever we were coming to the end of episode four and um, basically asked us if we wanted to do Cosmic Star. And I think he pitched it as, what was it? It was like a, a RPG based in the future where you play a secret agent who is also like this like movie star. And I was like, okay, so that's, that sounds perfectly fine. <laughs> I will do that. And uh, I was like, I was like, I know you're gonna go for it. And he's like, uh, and he like, like briefly touched on like something that was like, you know, early '90s, and I just like flooded him with like 1980s like references <laughs> so quickly, just because I was like finally getting to jump into that that world. So uh, we got, we definitely get to sort of flex our uh, '80s, early '90s muscles in this to some extent it's kind of fancy star four god, god there's so many references even like you know likes of like bleach you know that wasn't one of their references but like you know i we threw that in there and and then you got chrono trigger you know that's obviously a massive influence for cosmic star if not musically you oh know, yeah definitely you know the the roots of the game definitely yeah, especially especially just looking at how the parties of characters move around and oh, yeah. encounter enemies it, it really screams chrono trigger yeah, no, big time. Like, um, I think they went for a kind of blend of Chrono Trigger and another game. I'm not sure. It might have been Fantasy Star 4. I'm not sure. Um, don't quote me on that because I can't remember if they... Because I know they were originally going for like a kind of... like It was just going to be like the Chrono Trigger battle system, but uh, they went for a kind of hybrid as well. So, like, you know, that there's they were putting their mark on it at the same time. So it was, it was kind of like up to us to put our mark on you know what were very obviously late 80s, late 80s early 90s uh, musical influences so it's been a lot of fun it's been a lot of saxophone used in the soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> uh, whether whether Dan has uh, agreed with it or not I think he's kind of got Stockholm Syndrome with the saxophone now that I've put everywhere <laughs> and he's just a slow I love it saxophone. it's great, it's great. Yeah. but uh, no it's I don't know it's been a lot of fun I think we're approaching tell you now maybe a rough amount of this is just music tracks by the way this is not the cutscene tracks which obviously will be on the final release as well but um let me see just looking in my top secret folder uh yeah it's 50 or 49 tracks i think 49 like wow. separate like music themes for people and places overall in the game so wow. it's it's bigger than dust already and uh, we haven't even started scoring, like, you know, we haven't properly started scoring all the cutscene stuff yet. So it's a, uh, I'd say it's the biggest project we've done to date. I think what we wanted to do was kind of sort of outperform ourselves to some extent over dust because that was such a massive thing for us anyway. But yeah, I, th I think we, we've done a good job anyway. So hopefully everyone else thinks so. That's exciting. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I had no idea it would be your biggest project, but, you know, like we said, we're I fans, don't think so. we. <laughs> I don't think we realized it was going to be our biggest yeah. project. We were just like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, like I, I, I expected maybe the scope of like Penny Arcade episode four again, mm. um, but it is, it's massive. Like, I mean, we've been working on it since uh, the Kickstarter got funded, which was January of last year, and like we've been working flat out. Like, there's been no lull in work um, flow for 
Cosmic Star for, for for us like for the past year and a bit. So very cool. It's good. Yeah, it's that's, cool. That's exciting. I think <laughs> Penny Arcade Four only has twenty five to twenty eight uh, tracks from you on it. Really? I think it's around twenty five. But it has two from Penny Ar- from Penny Arcade Three and some uh, and some arranged versions. It's, oh yeah, the extra you, ones. Yeah. Yeah, but for, uh, 49, man. Oh, yeah. And I this is before wait. like anything else goes on it. I'm just like <sighs> The audio <laughs> makes file a master me. all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. The, the audio the, the the selfish audio file in me who does not have to mix and master them is like doing a little twirl like woo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sort of on on that similar note, when you when you've worked on Dust and Penny Arcade 4, I know like with the Dust soundtrack you have the uh, the old school versions of the songs and you have some arrangements on the Penny Arcade 4 soundtrack. Are there any, any ever tracks that you make that don't get, you know, they sort of don't hit the cutting room floor or they get left on the cutting room floor? Like are those the kinds of things you might eventually release someday or you know, or do you usually like work very cleanly where there's no like extra material left behind? Do you mean for Cosmic Star or in uh, general? Uh, more, more in general, like uh, in this case for PA4 and uh, Dust, since those ones are actually, you know, games that are done. Yeah, we, we've been pretty lucky with a lot of uh, PA4. I mean, most, in fact, most of our relationship with Z-Boy has been very fortunate for us. They've been totally on board with nearly everything we've written. Uh, and usually because we work with the developers at an earlier stage in development of the, the song, then that means that if if it's not working out at the very beginning, we'll 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 change it, you know. Uh, so we'll it's quite rare I find that we'll have to completely scrap a song, but that does happen so often. But if it gets scrapped and it wasn't right, it's probably not right to finish anyway, and we wouldn't really want to just release a, a rubbish song because we worked on it. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Cool. So is there a plan? to release CSH in a physical form as well, or is it just going to be digital via the usual channels like Bandcamp and Louder? I don't know. I mean, I, it hasn't really been discussed. I mean, we could do it if there was a big demand for it. Definitely consider it. But uh, at the minute, like, I mean, we are, like, we're literally doing one day at a time. We're just, like, because it's such a mammoth, like, sized pro- project that it's just, uh-huh. like, just getting it done is... Is the only thing we're really thinking about at the minute. We're only yeah. starting now to think about, you know, mix and mastering when that's going to happen for just the in-game version of the soundtrack. And then, you know, I think initially it'll be just be the digital version version of it because it's like um, right. it's it's a good bit of work to do the physical release. But I do really, you know, I really like that kind of thing. You know, and I I like collecting like physical copies of soundtracks that i really like as well and so i know that's like that will be something a lot of people were asking about but um for now i'd say just digital just to keep it keep, keep our sanity <laughs> yeah this, this this is really neither here nor there but i mean the the market for both um games and music is in a really fascinating place right that right now because yeah. no one's really sure th- how much people value physical and how much people are willing to pay for digital and there's a lot of uncertainty and experimentation going on in that front but uh, and enough about, enough about that i guess uh oh, yeah. now you have these three great soundtracks that we've been talking to are sort of you know your i i would say your three um largest releases that are all rpgs that our our fans are uh many of whom are very interested in we've also done a couple of arranged tracks on the side for different music projects like the like the fez fz albums did a bonus track for super ubi land you did some music for chrono trigger music for 25 games so from a musician's perspective what's the difference in terms of time and effort and approach between original pieces for your uh soundtracks and arranged pieces for works like those the approach it's a lot more difficult i would say because if I'm arranging someone else's music, especially like, you know, like the Zelda remix, the Hoi Small Fry one we did way, way, way back. You know? uh-huh. Or like the Chrono Trigger ones more recently, like I had the same, had the same like kind of scared feeling <laughs> when they were getting put together because it's like, I don't know. I mean, some people will do remixes and they just release them and they'll be happy with them. You know, the way they are, they may not be, you know, the most incredible remixes, but they're, you know, those people they, they enjoyed making it and it's just their way of going i really love that game or i love that time in my childhood where i play chrono trigger or zelda or whatever and this is kind of my tribute to it where it's like kind of 
shit myself you know, whenever I'm like remixing and stuff like that because it's such a big deal. I don't want to like I don't want to half-heartedly do it. Um, and, and yeah, you don't no want to you want to dishonor that uh, composer that you really respect so much. Yeah, and like there's no one like not that we you know not a like Robert and Bill for example would you know go. Well, I guess they do. They they do tell us to stop by saying, "Yep, that sounds good. We can approve that, and that wraps up a track." But you, there's no one there to, you know, wrap up your remix except you, or maybe you know, the album release deadline. So, like for Chrono Trigger, I was pretty much like rehashing it right up until the point where um, Randy from Elder Geek was like, uh, "I'm going to be releasing this tomorrow." I was like, "Right, there you go. <laughs> Take that version of the remix." And um, I just ha- you have to just sort of it's that thing that uh, a lot of composers I think get where you have to eventually stop sort of tinkering with music and just you know that has to be it you know you you can't just the longer you like tinker with something you're gonna just sort of risk making it worse or you know i mean you're just you're you're fine-tuning stuff that you'll only you'll really notice like so i'd say uh remixing is a bit more time is a lot more time consuming than working with you know a developer essentially is almost like you know uh, your director, you know, your music di- director, or at the end of the day, they're your clients. So, you know, if they say, yes, that's done, then it's done. That's why we don't really do remixes too often, because just don't have the time. <laughs> they, they take up so much time, it's crazy. Like, so. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess you have more, a lot more considerations in mind when you're doing that, too, in terms of, like, how does this compare to the original? How close am I going? How close am I not going? Yeah, well, that's it. Like, it. It's, it, it's a bit of a head melt. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like you're trying to do, you know, you're trying to paint over someone else's painting, but starting from scratch. Yeah, that's that's the perfect way to describe it, I'd say. Yeah. That's you don't want to end up like that woman that uh, repainted a better version of the most of Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was a bad idea. Oh, wow. Yeah, was... no, that was, that was the worst remix I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I prefer it. <laughs> you, you, you would prefer it. I like the Avatar. Well, it, it has, it has, it has the comedy value of like extremely bad poetry. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I, need to, I need to see that picture now. <laughs> Just look it up on Google and laugh. It's, 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 it's hilarious, but it's sort of tragic. It's painful to think about what that means. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we actually, um, this is not really related, but me and Dan have a folder that we've collected over years called, uh, it used to be called 10 Minute Wonders, and it was kind of like our way of like, what amount of music, what what amount of music and what quality of music could we make in 10 minutes? And uh, it's full of some, some things I would probably compare to that painting, I would say, definitely, <laughs> that, that, that rework of that painting. And it's never 10 minutes, it's always like 3 hours, 4 hours. <laughs> I've spent a stupid amount of time on some songs that I've made for, for just Dan's ears. Like <laughs> no one else, no it's one like, else. Like we have a folder, top secret folder that we share that no one else is ever ever going to hear. <laughs> it would well, be the end of Hyperduck Signworks as we know it. I'd say it's the magic sketchbook. That's where all the kazoo themes are. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what that's what they are kazoo themes. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds that sounds like Prince's vault of unreleased music that he just draws from once a year just to mess around oh we never uh, draw from that folder that is, <laughs> there's nothing there that can be salvaged like, so. that, that one's under lock and key it sounds like yeah no it's no yes <laughs> so and now i'm curious oh, <laughs> wish you hadn't told that story now i mean I, I can give you an idea of what's in there there is one song called dan laugh synth where i sampled dan's laugh <laughs> into a sample library and then put a drum beat to it so that sounds wonderful <laughs> and that's one of the more Fantastic. Uh, digestible songs, I'd say. So, I can call it a song. <laughs> you stretch creative muscles that way, though. Yeah, no, I miss doing that. We should do that more often, Dan, actually. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, whenever you get these super forward thinking companies that give everyone a day every month and they say, go do whatever you want and see what ideas come out. That's kind of what we do. It's like a little palate cleansing yeah. exercise, except for music. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that's I can it. dig that. Yeah. <laughs> So you just don't want to hear what comes out. Yeah. No. <laughs> so uh, speaking of things that are maybe under lock and key, um, can you guys talk? Uh, do you guys have any other projects upcoming that you're th- uh, working on that you can talk about, or is that sort of still up in the air or a secret? Hmm. <laughs> um, 
we actually we've been focusing on getting rid of a lot of our projects, you know, because it felt like we possibly took on quite a few too many projects at once, and then the scope of Cosmic Star stretched out uh, and got so much larger that we figured, yeah, we we better just focus on this. Um, I think we've got a couple of smaller things that I don't know right now if we can actually talk about them. I'm afraid. But, That's okay. Uh, I- I don't even know what they are. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, no, literally, we can't talk about them. We don't know what they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to ask the the third hyperduck, yeah. the one that nobody actually, knows about. Should have actually Ooh. cleared it. Um, could we talk about monsters and monocles? Uh, yeah. No, of yeah. course. I think that's fine. Yeah, we're working with the Retro Dreamer guys on their next game called Monsters and Monocles, which is like a kind of a top-down four-player. Uh, shooter and it's uh, you can actually check it out on it's on Steam Greenlight I think and uh, yeah they're going for uh, an early release soon and it's been a lot of fun actually it's a completely different soundtrack from uh, what we're currently working on so but uh, we'll hopefully get some updates on that pretty soon I'd say put some music out there Very yeah cool. I, I think they'd be cool if us um, we, we need to confirm with them but uh, we'll probably be able to share some of that music publicly soon I guess I mean you can hear some of it in their, their trailer um, but yeah it's kind of fun it's kind of weird there's a like a gremlin choir used it quite extensively in that soundtrack so far so yeah it's like orchestra sort of orchestra with uh, gremlins yeah that's what it is <laughs> that's nice. the best way i could describe the music <laughs> i'm down yeah <laughs> so we'll, we'll skip to some more uh general stuff here uh, as we kind of get ready to wind up but uh I, I like to ask this question of every musician we have on the show um who are some of you as musical heroes like you know your favorite artists your favorite game composers favorite you know mainstream bands um who are they and then sort of related to that if you all could like do a collab with anybody, you know, living, dead, uh, a Japanese musician, um, American, from anywhere in the world, uh, no, you know, no actual terrestrial limitations here. Who would that uh, person be, or persons? You go ahead first, Chris. Uh, what was the first question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I buried like four in there. Uh, musical <laughs> musical heroes, like your, you know, really influential oh, or your favorite artists. Musical heroes. Um. Uh, the I would say uh, the first one that came to my mind is uh, the Bleach composer uh, Shiro Saigisu. Yes, yeah, Saigisu. Um, just all the music in Bleach. Like I binged watch that at um, a very unbusy part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I lay in bed for a good solid four to five days and watched all of Bleach. And uh, yeah, no, I mean the music in in Bleach is just incredible and um i think after watching bleach so much that there was always something i in me that i wanted to like kind of you know pay homage to that soundtrack in some ways and uh, i kind of get the chance to uh, we got we got a chance to kind of do that in some of the themes for cosmic stars so it's pretty cool um if i could uh work with anybody in particular, uh, probably the Trollolo guy, but he's dead, so. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Now I want to hear some <laughs> of his music sampled and synthesized by you in your secret notebook. Oh, oh. shit. Yeah, okay. Deal. <laughs> and we will share that one with you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, Yahtzee. Yeah. Oh, man. I've just, like, signed my, my That sounds like more. a slam dunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you reckon, Dan? Music hero. Uh, I mean, a, a sort of consistent hero for me. You know, it does change all the time. Uh, but um, consistent one would probably be Pat Metheny group. Oh, uh, of course. Who, uh, well, all, anything that Pat Metheny does, he's. I guess if you don't know, he's well, he's pretty big in the states, isn't he? Uh, a composer and guitar player, mostly kind of jazz music, but. His the breadth of stuff that he writes is just unbelievable, and as an improviser, he's just like one of my favorite. So that kind of informs a lot of my ideas. Although I wouldn't even be 
anywhere near his level. Um, as for game composers, I mean, I owe I owe way too much to Nobuo Matsu for the just for Final Fantasy Seven. Oh the, well, yeah, he, he's a hell of a starting point. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, and I mean, I'm sure it's the same answer for a million game composers but we actually, I, yeah, I, do. I was gonna say we a lot of composers are very influenced particularly by ff7 uh our last yeah. guest was ff7 as well yeah i mean uh eight is good as well i like i like a lot of his stuff but seven stuck with me i think just but that's because of the story relevance and and it was just i, I loved it but yeah, um and final fantasy 7 was the first game in the series that was released in europe so was that 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 was was that your first exposure to Oematsu? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I played... Uh, I don't think he was involved in Mystic Quest, was he? It was called Mystic Quest on yeah. the Game Boy no. in Europe. And I don't know. They, I, I get confused by what they're all named. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's so many of them that <laughs> they have their names changed from region to region. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a mess. Yeah, I think Seven would have been the first time I'd heard him, and it was just because it was all thematic and it was character themes and all that. It was the first time I'd really heard that, and I loved it. And it's because I loved the game story as well that I think you you put so much attachment to. It. And I'm pretty sure everyone who loves Final Fantasy Seven thinks the same about the music. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that that informed a lot of my my writing style, I guess, and. But I love other things. I love a lot of them. Uh, Hotline Miami, I really enjoyed. Oh, that's yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah. <laughs> All those guys. Awesome. Like. Never, yeah, I know. There's so many people, but I could never have touched any of that, really. I would I would never have come up with that, any of the music that was going on there. I don't think so. <laughs> that's great. So good. I'm just going to say also, every single composer that worked on Mega Man X. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. my yeah, default that, answer, that, usually. Yeah, that, that Capcom, like, just battery of composers. It's kind of oh. tricky to figure out exactly who composed what Mega Man thing. Same thing no. for Castlevania music, because it was it was just sort of an internal Capcom team, or Konami for Castlevania, but so much of it is amazing. Oh. Yeah. The list is like, I think it's like five, six, or four. I don't know. It's, it's a good handful of composers. Like X, like the X series right through to, well, I stopped playing at four, but like... Oh, you picked so a good, good stopping point. No joke. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my last one. But the music in that one was really good as well, actually. But uh, yeah. Excellent. Oh, so yeah, I. It, it's funny that you mentioned that because those. I, I'm the same age as you, also. Like, I'm. I'm roughly the same age as you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Final Fantasy VII was my first in the series too. So, like, for me, w- when I think of that, I. I talk when we do regular episodes of the music show. If we play a Final Fantasy VII track, I always have to catch myself from like making the same comments that I make every time of like, oh man, that sound font Final Fantasy VII. It's just. It's so distinctive. You could tell FF Seven from one note, and. Uh, it's, yeah. Being my first exposure to that, that to Uematsu's work too, it's I could definitely dig why it's so influential because I mean it's why I'm a big fan of game music these days. So right, so um, I think we may have touched upon this a little bit, but I was going to ask, uh, do you have any personal favorite game soundtracks that have influenced you, or maybe a particular song that's really stuck with you over the years from particular soundtracks? Oh. Uh, uh. I, I mean, I was just going to say Mega Man X again, but uh, just because uh, it took me 13 years to complete Mega Man X. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You finished it, yeah. though. I, I hey, that, that it. final boss is can be pretty rough. you got to be super good at that wall jumping. He's tough as nails. Like I, that floating head. Oh, I hated him so much. I get Stupid angry when I see people that can do the Hadouken on that boss. Like they get in there, they don't get hit, and then they Hadouken on the platform. And I'm just yeah, like, on the platform, like just a millisecond after you land on it from some impossible wall dash jump. It's like, what? What are you even doing, man? Just get, I get angry <laughs> I, when people are better than me at games. Uh, I just accept it and just you know keel over and cry in a corner. So, so I, you I can a, never do the Hadouken. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but are you more of a Storm Eagle guy or more of a, say, Spark Mandrill guy? Uh, oh, scenes? Spark Mandrill. I mean, I did the, I wouldn't call it a remix, but the, I did, you know, remake the Storm Eagle theme tune with all the yeah. original sounds. That guitar uh, hook at the beginning of Storm Eagle. Oh, so good. That, that will stick with me forever. That's so great. You guys are right. Such... I should go play Mega Man X today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting getting the hankering for it. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, going to be predictable and just say Mega Man X, everything. 
There's, there's no particular tune there. It's just all of them. Or maybe the world theme from Final Fantasy VII. I remember that just as always stuck okay. in my head from when I was watching my cousin play it when I was younger. So, so good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, mine, mine are pretty much the same. I'm just, they're just the ones that really stuck with me when I was younger, and they're kind of ingrained in your in your formative years or your, your early years, sorry. And... Um, I don't know. Oh, one soundtrack I loved when I first heard it was Quake Two. Oh yes, I remember that? Was that was that Sonic Mayhem or was that? I was. That was Sonic. I Mayhem. think that was Sonic Mayhem. Mayhem. That was an awesome yeah, yeah. soundtrack. I loved it just because it was. I was a guitar player and it was just riffs and just guitar and drums. It was perfect. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. The Quake Three one was pretty good as well, actually. I remember Rocktronica. It's the only track I remember from that. It was a really good track. But uh, yeah, I could. I mean, that list could just keep going. You know, it's it's hard to like stop at one song. Okay. Yeah, well, it's like you'll pick one for now. Yeah, <laughs> you yep. say pick one song. I picked an entire soundtrack. So hey, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we were talking earlier about the different games that you've done and how each has a, you had a different sort of thematic approach to each soundtrack so is there a genre of music that you'd like to experiment with that you haven't messed around with before i mean it was kind of the 80s for me like that kind of blend and then cosmic star kind of let me do that but once i was able to do it i, I didn't necessarily like an 80s style so i don't know i can't really think past that one because i wanted to do that one for so long like so I gotta really think about it. I mean, um, Dan and I are writing uh, an original EP together at the minute, which is kind of letting us do just new sounds that we haven't done before, kind of like sort of prepared felt piano and awesome guitar sounds and stuff. So I don't know. I mean, uh, it's for me, uh, it's it's hard to say what I want to do next. I'm just kind of excited to see what sort of comes our way. I mean, I guess related to that question, is there a style of music that you'd like to see featured in more video games, or is the answer to this going to be 1980s also? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the less the better, because that means we can do it. And, uh, <laughs> right on. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear some genuine kind of folk music or uh, more acoustic instruments in a, in a real setting, you know, but I don't know if, it, if there's much, many games that lend themselves to that style none that i can think of so much but apart from maybe like the stuff the elder scrolls stuff but i mean jeremy done an amazing job on that already yeah, i know uh, awesome yeah. went he's doing cool stuff with the next banner saga stuff ah uh, yeah yeah, yeah oh the banner gosh. saga stuff is cool. when, yeah. when you said folk acoustic music that is exactly where my mind went the banner yeah. saga music is so incredible Yes, yeah. it is nice, actually, from what I've heard. And um, yeah, so it's already been done. It's all been done. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, you could go electroacoustic music, which is pretty crazy. You could do anything with that. I mean, I don't Jazz. know. That's the kind of exciting thing. I mean, it depends on on whatever next game gets made. You know, games are still in their infancy in my eyes, so the music is going to change with that. And the exciting thing is that we don't really know what's going to be around the corner. I could never have predicted Hotline Miami, and I could never have predicted <laughs> anyone was going to do with, with half of these games. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I always get really excited about that. We, you know, we have that our like mission statement at RPG Fan Music, and like how we like spread appreciation of game music or whatever. And uh, you know, it's it is kind of crazy. Like ten, even like ten years ago, I just would not have realized the scope of of how like game audio has expanded in terms of like the number of styles and the way people are going about doing it. It's just crazy. Yeah. Considering yeah. it used to be like, you know, all right, this Japanese composer did a soundtrack for a game and maybe they'll release a soundtrack for it in Japan only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. I, I think uh, I think we'll wind down now. This last question is sort of a softball. You know, do you, do you have any general advice for people who do what you all do? Um, you know, closing comments, anything you'd like to say, anything you want to plug, go right ahead. Good time to do it. Well, for, I mean, I was said this a few times before, but like, you know, um, we do get, I mean, we get emails in every week, I would say, uh, from other composers who are like just starting out or have been going for a, a while and just aren't hitting the stride they want to hit. Um, I would just always say, just, you know, go look for your work. And while trying to emulate other people's sounds, you know, to like learn how that technique is done, also try to put your own, your own mark on your sound. You want to, like um, Dan and I, we do try styles. You know, we've done orchestral, we've done... 80s ish whatever it is we've done rock we've done lots of different styles you know we've done if you could call it 
gypsy jazz, you know, uh, we've done that, but we've always tried to put our own kind of mark on it. So I'd say try and put your own original mark on it and also just make sure you're actually enjoying doing it because if you're miserable, then it's really, really not worth it. Like, I don't think, um, me and Dan are miserable at, at any of the work that we get to do. Like, you know, it's, it's always fun. It's quite incredible. And we're really, really lucky. We're really humbled that we actually do get to do what we do and, um, have that much creative freedom with it. So yeah, there's, there's something in there somewhere, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I would say just, just listen and absorb as much as you possibly can. And, um, yeah, find a, find a way to enjoy it as much as possible because, What's the point? Otherwise, that's the truth. And then yeah. I know that's a bit of a cop out of, of an answer. You know, <laughs> no, it's, like a, it's like the follow your dreams. Listen to everything and yourself. work harder than everyone. <laughs> well, yeah. be yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. be hyperducks. Be hyperducks. That's a, that's yeah. that's a good closer. Yeah. No, that's not so pretentious. <laughs> be <laughs> us. Be us. No, I I I, to- <laughs> I totally agree. Not to hop on your coattails or anything, but like the, that's the best advice I received. Like I I you know before I went to grad school, I was like you know working at a place I didn't like, and you know it, I had a lot of people that were like, well, you have a job, keep it, and then I had a lot of people who were, well, you're miserable, so go do what makes you happy. So yeah. then that was the right call. So I, I think that's I think that's it, it may seem like a cop out, but that's really good advice I think for people to keep in mind. Because if you hate what you do, yeah. then why do it? Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, the other thing is when you're trying to maybe figure out exactly oh what your style is and what's good, you've always got to try and remember you're at the service, first of all, of your client um, who's paying you to make music for them. But you're also at the service of the music and the game. And if you forget about that, I think you can get lost so easily. And you just got to always keep that there. It's the service of the game and service of the music. Excellent. Yes. Well, thanks very much for that. And guys, thanks so much for taking your time to sit down and talk with us in the studio. Absolutely. It's It's been a pleasure. We, you know, like like we said at the beginning, we're big fans of your work. So we've been trying to uh, find a good time for quite a while. So t- to Mike's credit for setting this up, great work as well. Well, thanks for taking I, the I've... time, Mike, guys. I really appreciate it. No, yeah. no, no. We're the ones who appreciate it, man. I've been just sitting in my chair, just <laughs> trying, not, just trying to hold myself back I, a little bit. I, I, I'm, Im- <laughs> I'm impressed actually because he has been super excited for this. I mean, I, I'm excited too, but like, you know, I think, I think, I think Mike is a self-professed Zaboid and Hyperduck fan uh, <laughs> yeah. to the extreme. Absolutely. So, like every day, he's like, I can't wait. I'm like, I know, right? So <laughs> maybe I maybe we can do that every day. Just, just you know, conservatively, let's say it was four times a week. But yeah, I, I was four very times. excited for this interview, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us. Oh, uh, no problem. Maybe we can do a follow up whenever Cosmic Star is out. We would yeah. love to. Yeah, definitely. Maybe right we can on. highlight some of the music in it. Yeah, yeah. cool. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening, and for Mike, for Chris, and Dan. Thanks everybody for being here. Have a good one. Bye.